our featured BBB Wise Giving Alliance accredited charity seal holders for this episode are Mercy Home for Boys and Girls, Learning Ally, National Center for Missing and Exploited Children. To find out more about these and other BBB Wise Giving Alliance accredited charity seal holders, go to give.org. <music> You're listening to the Heart of Giving podcast with Art Taylor, powered by BBBgive.org. Here we explore the motivations that form the basis of giving and service. We inspire generosity and celebrate the transformative effects that giving and service have on the human spirit and on community. The conversations featured on the podcast also uncover giving strategies that educate and provide tools to help listeners make impactful gifts of both their time and money. We hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome to the Heart of Giving podcast, powered by BBBgive.org. Give.org is the nation's standards-based charity evaluator, and it's your one-stop source for information on giving, and reports on the most asked about charities. I'm Art Taylor, your host. We continue to turn our attention to what's going on in the Ukraine. When the war started now over a year ago, we saw an outpouring of support from American philanthropic institutions, companies, and most importantly, American citizens to support the efforts underway to help people who were affected by the war in the region. And uh, I know our website got an enormous amount of attention during that time because people wanted to know where they could go to support charities that were doing important work in the region at the time and who could actually deliver aid and other needed support to people who were escaping from the war in the Ukraine or being forced to move from their homes to other places. We decided that we would try to stay in tune with what was going on there. And over the last year or so, we've had other individuals speak to us about the situation, including some charity leaders, individuals who are parts of large international relief organizations who are assisting in the area. And we were also able to speak with an advocate for the Ukraine who gave us some insight as to what might need to happen if we're going to deliver the kind of support that people need. That was with uh, former Ukrainian finance minister, Natalie Juresko. And I commend that podcast to you as well as the ones we've done with other international organization leaders. Today, however, we're going to introduce to you someone who is actually a Ukrainian citizen. She's lived and worked in the Ukraine all of her life. She is currently the co-founder and director of the charity monitoring organization in the Ukraine called Charity Turner. She also worked in the journalism field prior to that, and she's also a CSR specialist and media trainer. Uh, but we wanted to reach out to her because of her, her status as a monitoring organization leader. Just like Give.org, which is tasked with identifying the most trustworthy charities in the United States for people to give to. We have partner organizations, of separate, of course, but partner organizations like Charity Turner in Ukraine and a host of others around the world that are doing monitoring work to help people in those countries understand what's going on with the charity scene. But today we have Katerina Zuk. We call her Katya. And Katya is going to speak to us about what she's seeing what charities there are ones and how we go about determining how we can support them. Because I know Americans are still very concerned about what's going on there and still want to provide some of their philanthropic 
dollars to help that situation. So, uh, Katerina, we are thrilled to have you. And I should add, we've commissioned Katerina to begin doing blogs every other week. And you'll be able to read her blog on give.org, which will provide insight to you from a bird's eye view. Now, Katerina is not living currently in the Ukraine, and we're going to hear that story. She's living in, in Poland, in Warsaw right now. But you're going to find out that she has a bird's eye view on the situation in the Ukraine and what the needs and aspirations are for philanthropic groups that are trying to help people on the ground. This will be part one of our interview with Katya. And part two will be coming up the following week. I hope you'll listen in for that as well. So Katrina, welcome to the Heart of Giving podcast. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Now, I'll just say up front that uh, English is not Katrina's <laughs> first language. She is. Uh, she speaks Russian as her first language. And so you're going to have to be a little patient at moments. We're going to have to repeat some things just to make sure we get it clear. But I thought it was so important that Give.org be in a position to share with you the insights of someone who is there in the area and who can tell us what the needs and aspirations are. So, Katerina, again, I want to welcome you. And um, I want to just start by asking you to tell us your story as it as it happens. Your story is not very different than many people who lived in Ukraine when the war began and now find themselves in the region. Now you're in, in uh, Poland. But what at what point did you have to leave home to get to Poland? Um, you know, we live in uh, Kiev uh, in uh, March a year ago with uh, my husband and was with my three kids. Although that was uh, uh, we lived not far from uh, Bucha in Gostomel. It's near ten or fifty minutes, uh, fifteen minutes near our homes, and then that was times. The first days of March, when Kiev started uh, uh, surrounded by Russian corps at that time. So all my friends started to, to, to tell me, hey, Katya, you should go. You should go. Hey, come on, you, sh you should go. You have three kids. You should go. We don't know what it would be after some days. We really didn't know. And we are some scared because uh, we heard all the things that was near us and uh, only when we was in, in Warsaw at the end of March. This was uh, um, yesterday or two days ago. That was uh, um, really sad anniversary of the invasion. You remember all the world remember uh, this, uh, this date, this uh, last days of March when Ukrainians came to to this little villages, yeah, little cities, satellite cities uh, near Kiev. It was horrible. So, I um, really we we heard it all, and um, and uh, we goes by evacuation bus with some other refugees <laughs> because I, I have my car, but <laughs> without any gas. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So my car, yes, yeah, stay near my home some some weeks, and uh, then volunteers came and uh, get my car for and drive uh, until the July. Uh, so um, there was some some telephone numbers, uh, and I called to synagogue, one of the community uh, Jewish community in Kiev, and uh, asked them about help with uh, evacuation for my family. And they told me that uh, they go now only to Moldova, not to Poland, but to Moldova. And I thought, okay, okay, that's no reason. I go to, to nowhere, you know. Goes to nowhere. I don't know where to live, what to do, what to eat, how to work, and uh, I don't know anything. I understand only that after two or three days, uh, uh, my kids 
will be as far as possible from home. So that was in, in our minds. And we and after today, that was 7th of March and 9th of March, we start to go to, uh, to Moldova and um, go 10 hours. In the peaceful life, that was three and a half hours <laughs> from Kiev to, to, you know, to border with Moldova. That's, that's not far. But we go 10 hours because there was a lot of Russian corps uh, in the... Yeah. Then after border, we go to place uh, in, in nowhere, still in nowhere. <laughs> that was my first time in Moldova. And we go to, I don't know, that was a place for uh, for uh, Ukrainian refugees um, in the border with uh, in the border Romania and Moldova. So we go to Moldova. So from from Kiev to this place in in uh, Moldova, there was twenty hours uh, of our trip by bus with another people and um, staying on the border. Or something that would normally have taken three hours. Yeah, normally it's three hours, three three and a half hours uh, from Kiev to border with Moldova. That's not far. Yeah. And uh, but we go to twenty hours to this uh, some center for for refugees in uh, Moldova, and uh, I started to uh, search in, to search some uh, uh, place in Chisino for family to rent maybe some flat apartment for one day or some day because I understood at that moment that we can stay in the, this um, summer camp. This was really summer camp <laughs> in the yeah in the winter. It's really cold without without kitchen without uh, mm. stores. This was problem for us. This problem for family was little kid mm. because my bronca had mm. uh, this time mm, mm -hmm. one one year and eleven months. So yeah, she had to do to two years oh, birthday my. in in Warsaw. <laughs> yeah, mm. and my my friend from Holland, he he helped us. He find a place uh, because uh, there's no any um, internet. <laughs> you know, that's only only messenger with some words by some right. minutes. You know, that's mm. really uh, problematically uh, story. So he find for us place uh, for three nights. One, one room, little apartment. And um, then uh, I started um, to search some ways uh, how to, to get uh, Warsaw. So I don't know what it was, and uh, I don't know what was in my mind. I, <laughs> really, that's for every refugee. Uh, that's I know after this year and work with refugee also, I understand that uh, it's not about Maybe it's not about logic or some issues, you know. That's that's about emotions. I understood that I mm -hmm. want to go to Warsaw in the place and not far from from Ukraine, place with opportunities. And at first, was opportunities to help yeah. uh, other Ukrainians. Mm -hmm. So that was in my mind. I uh, this was in mm. a, a habitation it named. I think that you are every day, every month, many years, you help someone, you know, and even when something change in in uh, your life, you want to do the same. <laughs> That's your life. You you live it. Yeah, so it's one. So we started to go Warsaw, yeah. and uh, uh, my colleague from uh, ICFIO, Anna, helped me a lot. Find found for us uh, a place, apartment in Warsaw, place to stay, and uh, then we started to search some some apartment for rent. <laughs> of course, <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, we really. I'm searching it uh, more than three months, but but now I'm here. <laughs> yeah. 
So the, the April, uh, my uh, my older daughter goes to the sixth class in a Polish school. My kids now in kindergarten. Mm-hmm. My younger kids, my son and my daughter, you know, in kindergarten, and uh, they speak Polish. Their kids speak Polish. <laughs> it's really interesting because I don't speak Polish. <laughs> mm. I understand, but I don't speak Polish. That's, that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. But I understand 99% I understand. But I, got, I, I can't start to speak, you know, that's some block. Uh, so we are here and uh, from after some weeks, we started to go out <laughs> from apartment to something far, <laughs> the one or two streets <laughs> yeah. to understand where we are and what to do because we were uh, something disappointed, something. We were yeah. disappointed, disoriented, you know, didn't understand what to do and how to live. Uh, you know, and the uh, every, everyday news. Uh, it's, this was horrible. This was horrible months. And then I found a job in uh, in Warsaw as relocation officer in the uh, Jewish community. So I worked there four months and worked with uh, also with uh, refugees. The same as me, <laughs> with people. <laughs> the, yeah, the same people. So we uh, we understood each other, <laughs> yeah, and uh, we talk a lot about yeah. their plans. And this relocation officer, I help them to go to another country, or maybe to to stay in 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 uh, in Poland. That's. As for the people in the same situation, they they was uh, still uh, disoriented, yeah. And uh, but partly that was a new experience for me. Part of them was from uh, uh, Mariupol, from Crimea, from Kharkiv. The people without home, without home because of bombs and because of Russian attacks. Mm. So. People, yeah, yeah. So they, they, uh, there was time that uh, they will, they they tried to understand, <clears throat> not even how, not how to be how how to breathe. After all, that's the first. What, where we are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's horrible. Well, let me um, shift a little bit. This is a. Uh incredible story. And I, I listen to you talk and I, I say, wow, you had to go through that, but you're one of probably a million people who've had to go through something similar, um, given the number of refugees that we've seen over the last year or so leaving the Ukraine. I'm not sure what the exact figures are, but I know it's, um, last I heard was over a million people that had to leave the Ukraine and head to a surrounding country. Do you know what the exact stats are on that? Oh, a lot. That was from uh, from first days uh, of war. From yeah. From early morning, twenty four of February, a year ago, started. Uh, uh, yeah. I know. Thousands of thousands of people started to go to Poland and staying on border. Mm-hmm. So I have friends that stay yeah. on border two or three days. Days. Mm. So, you know, when a community proposed us to go not to Poland, but to Moldova, at first I thought, okay, okay, it would be faster. <laughs> that's my first, <laughs> you know, that was the first. It would be faster because... Yeah. Mm, my uh, really close friend with uh, with a little kid, uh, she stayed s- two or three days at uh, the border. So yeah, mm-hmm. it's many thousands of people, and you yeah. know we go out from home and uh, the middle of the day, twenty four of uh, February, and first the first that we saw. Horrible traffic, 
horrible traffic that goes to, to uh, out of uh, of the city. So, you know, uh, that's yeah, a, a lot of people, mm-hmm. and they hear still a lot of people more than in uh, in other countries because um, it's the first the Polish language. Mm-hmm. Is uh, mostly similar with Ukraine and uh, Ukraine and Russian language with both these languages. So we're starting to understand the Polish language mm. is much faster than uh, than another language yes, in the Europe Union. And a lot of people for, in Ukraine don't know English <laughs> English language. So that's yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what you can do without uh, any language is yes, yeah. That's that's the first and the second. Uh, Poland always was, you know, really close to us. Mentality and some region in in Ukraine uh, partly partly talk on on Polish language. So I knew before in, in Kiev, not you know something far from Poland from border. Even in Kiev, I knew before I goes to Poland, yeah. I knew some words in Polish, so that's we are really close. And yeah, that's the reason that people started to go at first to Poland yeah. because we are, yeah. Well, listen, we're into this pretty deep. We're going to probably have to end it here, but I wanted to give our listeners just a sense of what you've gone through and some ideas about what you're doing professionally uh, with your organization um, to help people identify charities that aren't scamming them, charities that are doing good work, and also to appreciate the needs that are going on now, which you lay out as being housing, number one, and secondly, emotional support, that being uh, to help deal with the trauma that you've all experienced. And in that We've also found out that you see the situation as there being Ukrainians are separated. You have those who are living inside of Ukraine who may not see the trauma that they are experiencing, but they are nonetheless. And those outside of the Ukraine having different needs. So this has been very helpful, very enlightening. And we'll do these two, these two episodes, we'll do these as separate episodes. We'll divide these up so that people can absorb how you've answered these questions in two bites rather than one straight episode to give them the time to go through it a couple of times if they need to, to appreciate what you said. And again, I want to just highlight for everyone that uh, Katya will be doing a blog for us that you can see on give.org. It'll be starting soon and she'll be posting every two weeks to give us some insights into what's happening there and the charity scene in particular and the needs of the people that we can help with here in the United States and other places where you're listening to this podcast. So Katya, thank you for joining us today. And obviously there'll be much more to come through your blogs. And for all of those who are listening for the first time, I want to thank you for tuning in to the Heart of Giving podcast. And I hope that you will be a subscriber. Subscriptions are really important because the way the podcast algorithms work is that the more subscribers you have, the more people who are likely to discover that the podcast exists. And we've had such amazing guests on this show over the last year and a half, two years and a half now, two and a half years we've been doing this that I just hope that more and more people get to know about it. And the way that happens is by you to go on your favorite podcast platform, whether that's Apple, Spotify, Google Play, or Podbean for that matter, and just like the podcast, like the show, and you'll be a subscriber and you'll get all of the new editions as they come out each week. This is a weekly show every Tuesday. Well, and if you want to support the podcast financially, you can do so by going to give.org and making a donation there. And I hope you'll follow Katya's blog. It's really important for all of us here 
in the United States and other places who want to support Ukraine to understand what's going on in the charity space, because those organizations are filling the gaps. They are attempting to reach the needs of people in ways that we could never even imagine existed. So let's stay on top of that. And that's why I'm so excited to to have Katya now join us to provide that insight. So thank you for listening. And uh, we'll see you back here for a new episode next week. You've just listened to the Heart of Giving podcast with Art Taylor. Be sure to tune in next time for a brand new episode. To listen to our other interviews, visit heartgiving.podbean.com. That's heartgiving.podbean.com. Subscribe to our show on major podcast platforms. The thoughts and opinions expressed on this podcast are the views and opinions of the guests, not those of the BBB Wise Giving Alliance or program affiliates. This podcast is for information and educational purposes only and is copyrighted with all rights reserved. This podcast is protected by Podbean's Terms of Service.